Can you paint different skin tones? For instance, in my years of digital drawing, I've mostly used basic color theory techniques for skin, without really delving into creative varied or nuanced tones. I'm curious about whether there is a correct skin color, how light and shadow affect different skin tones, and how I can incorporate this knowledge into my everyday drawing practice. So, let's dive into it all. In this video, we'll explore the fundamentals of color theory and how they relate to depicting human skin. We'll discuss warmth and coolness using photos as examples and analyze different skin tones using illustrations. Plus, you'll see my practical experiments as I apply the tips and tricks discussed throughout the video. To make it easier to follow along, I've included time codes for each section. Let's delve into color theory and how it influences our perception of human skin tones. First, let's discuss the three fundamental aspects of color – hue, saturation and value. Hue refers to the basic colors like red, blue and yellow. Understanding hue is crucial when painting skin tones, as skin encompasses a wide range of shades from warm peaches to cool olives. Next, we have saturation, also known as chroma, which is the intensity of purity of color. In terms of skin tones, subtle changes in saturation can convey various emotions. It's important to strike the right balance. Too much saturation can appear unnatural, while too little can make skin look lifeless. Finally, value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. Just like shades of grey, where white represents the lightness value and black the darkest. Understanding value helps create depth in portraits. Shadows and highlights play a crucial role in defining the contours of the face. So, Hue, saturation and value are the cornerstones of color theory, forming the foundation for depicting skin tones. I owe my ability to explain these concepts to the incredibly accessible class A Beginner's Guide to Understanding Color by Mark Hill. This class covers all the basic color terminology and has helped me grasp key concepts more effectively. In addition to fundamental theory, the class offers insights into analyzing paintings by renowned artists in terms of color and contrast, which teaches you to appreciate art and discern differences between artworks. Have you heard heard of high, middle and low chroma keys. Honestly, I was unfamiliar with these terms before taking this class. However, understanding them has been invaluable in analyzing the works of other artists, ultimately aiding me in consciously managing all necessary aspects to create my own artwork. This class originates from traditional painting, and despite my digital focus, I believe it offers the most solid foundation in understanding fundamental principles. Fortunately, I stumbled upon this class on Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, offering thousands of classes taught by industry professionals in film, illustration, design, painting, crafting, music, and beyond. With Skillshare, you can elevate your creative pursuits and projects to new heights. If you're unsure where to begin, don't worry, because Skillshare has you covered. They've created a learning path specifically designed to take you from beginner to pro in no time. This path consists of carefully selected classes that build on each other, reinforcing your learning along the way. They cover a range of experience levels, from beginner to advanced, and span various categories like design, productivity, creative freelancing, and tools and software such as Procreate and Blender, among others. Currently, I'm honing my skills with the next level Procreate, creating beyond the basics learning path, which explores advanced features of the program and helps me apply my traditional art knowledge in new ways. I have great news for you. The first 500 people to use my link will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So click the link and take advantage of this opportunity today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So, now let's explore warm and cool skin tones. Think of warm colors as though they give off a sense of warmth, like the cozy glow of a sunset or the comforting embrace of sunshine. On the other hand, cool tones create a cool feeling similar to the calm hues of a serene lake or a crisp winter morning. 
Understanding the interplay between warm and cool tones is crucial when painting skin tones. Human skin displays a wide range of hues, from the rosy warmth of a flushed cheek to the cooler tones of a shadowed jawline. Warm tones are more noticeable in areas of the face directly exposed to light, such as the cheeks, forehead, and nose. These areas often have a pink or golden hue, radiating a sense of vitality and warmth. On the flip side, cool tones take center stage in areas of the face that receive less direct light, like the jawline, temples, and under the eyes. These regions may appear more subdued, with hints of blue or purple, which adapt and dimension to the portrait. Before diving into the practical aspects of color theory, I delve into learning how to observe and analyze them using examples from other artworks. By studying the techniques of renowned artists and dissecting how they incorporate warm and cool tones into their pieces, we can glean valuable insights into their methods and styles. So let's delve into understanding how light and shadows interact on the skin's surface. I've curated examples of various skin tones from my favorite artists, loosely grouped based on the overall tone. Now I want to examine each example individually. To do this, I take color samples. First, from the illuminated part of the face, but not in the highlights. Here, I aim to find the local skin color, not the brightest part, but also not in the shadows. Secondly, I take a sample from the shadows. It's clear that for shadows, we need to select a much darker and richer shade. This becomes evident when observing the changes in color scales in the painting program. Regarding warm and cool tones, the shadows shift to cooler tones compared to the local skin color. This isn't new information to me. I've noticed these patterns before and have intuitively used them. But what about highlights? I've always been curious about the warmth of coolness. I checked all the highlight samples and confirmed that they are also much cooler than the skin tone, like the shadows. However, regarding the other two aspects, value and saturation, everything follows logically. The highlights are opposite to the shadows, meaning they are as light as possible, less rich than the skin tone, and much duller than the shadows. So, by carefully studying these examples, we can deepen our understanding of color theory and find inspiration for our own work, which is precisely what I did. It's important to note that the warmth and coolness of shadows can vary depending on the lighting and its temperature, and the surrounding environment should always be taken into account. It's not always a rule that shadows are cold. It all depends on the context in which the object is situated. Now let's delve into some advanced techniques. Another crucial aspect in drawing human skin is its physiology. Essentially, the face can be divided into three parts, each with its own distinct shade. This is explained by the concentration of blood vessels of different areas of the skin. Consequently, the forehead tends to be more yellowish, the nose and cheeks more reddish, and the lower jaw color with a bluish tint. Incorporating such subtle color variations enhances realism and loveliness in the depiction of the face. I also want to touch on the topic of using complementary colors to enhance skin tones in a drawing. While I'm not yet an expert in this area and have rarely used this technique, except for today's practice, I understand its significance and effectiveness. Undertones play a key role in this technique. Undertones are subtle shades that the skin exhibits and remind and changes regardless of lighting conditions. The easiest way to determine your skin undertone is by examining the color of the veins on your wrist. Let's consider two prominent examples. In the first example, the skin undertone is notably cool. By incorporating complementary colors, which are opposite to the skin color on the color wheel, we can enrich the skin tone and make the painting more expressive. For darker skin tones, the undertone is typically green or olive, indicating a warm undertone. This is clearly demonstrated in the video where green background is placed under the local skin color. I provide a link in the description for those who haven't seen it yet. So, we have explored two advanced techniques for drawing skin. 
The first involves dividing the face into three shades – yellow, red and blue. The second technique is using complementary colors to enhance skin tones. Additionally, there is a third technique I am familiar with – outlining the sharp boundaries between light and shadow with a warmer, sometimes reddish, tint. This adds life and realism to the skin. With a step-by-step -step demonstration of drawing skin tones, using all these methods completed, here is the result. I want to emphasize that there is no one correct skin tone. Any shade can be utilized by incorporating the necessary shadows, highlights and range of tones. I hope you found this information helpful. Personally, I found it incredibly enlightening. I had been intrigued by this topic for a while, but had been putting it off, fearing it might be too complex. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share, comment and like if you found the content valuable. And, and until next time.